Today we have uh, Michelle Dorsey who will be presenting on, uh, re on your resume. She is a native court author who retired from the Navy after 20 years of service and she is currently working for the Coast Guard. She's a president-elect for the Southeast Texas Human Resource Association and currently is serving on several other local uh, boards. Please help me in welcoming Michelle to the Well, thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming, and not only that, thank you for being on time. This gives us the opportunity to start on time and pretty much leave on time, so it won't be long and drawn out. Now, before I start, we're going to go over a couple of things, and I would just like you guys to know that some of the items I'm going to say, I'm going to say it a couple of times, and it's only because it's very important for you guys to know these, these things, okay? And a lot of times it's not that you're not getting it, but it's because your neighbor is doing something else, and I want to make sure that the important uh, items, you know, are, is passed out, okay? Objectives for today is to assist the students in understanding and writing an effective resume. And the second objective is to learn the different resume formats and the advantages and disadvantages of each. Are there any questions? Okay. So, how many of you here have a resume, a current resume that you're using now? So, pretty much everybody. So, now we're just going to go over things that you can. Use to tweak your resume and make your resume a little more creative because your resume is your calling card. And a lot of them, um, a lot of resumes out here are just, um, what do you want to call it, something that is just the same format, the same font and everything. But you want to be creative because a empl employer is only going to look at your resume maybe 30 minutes, th excuse me, 30 seconds. And in 30 seconds, you want to be able to capture their attention and make sure that, hey, you get this interview. Because I'm sure if you're applying for the job, I'm sure you're qualified. You're not applying for jobs that you're not qualified for, right? Does, does anybody do that? No, I don't think so. So because of the way technology is, it's, a, it's really a global market. So someone can be sitting in Japan trying to apply for the same job that you're trying to get. So you definitely want to be creative and you want to stand out, okay? Okay, so what is a resume? The Webster's definition is a summary or statement of a job applicant's education and previous experience. Do we all agree with that? Yeah, sure. But in the real world, it's an electronic or a paper presentation describing, excuse me, why you should receive an interview for an open position. In fact, a resume is an advertisement, a company or organization, you're trying to sell yourself to that company or that organization, right? And you always want to put your best foot forward. So a resume be one of the most important pieces of writing material you'll ever create. Now, I'm sure some of you may disagree with that, especially if you're, you know, your, your major is writing or communications or whatever. But this resume is, is very, very important. And you gotta get it right the first time. Because you're not gonna have a second time for these people to take a look at you for that one particular job position. Okay, so a creative resume is the key that will open the door for you for a possible job. I'm still trying to learn how to work this thing, so please bear with me. Okay, so we already went over that. I've already said it once, so I'm just saying it again, so everyone will Excuse me, make sure that you understand it's an advertisement and your first impression, okay, to your employer. So this is why it's important. You want to get your foot into the door, right? So I've already said that like three times already, so I'm just trying to get you guys to understand. The resume is very important. Okay, we already went over this. How long the employer typically looks at a resume? Does anybody remember? Less than 30 seconds, one minute, or three minutes? Less than 30 seconds. So that means they're doing it very, very fast. And to be honest, a lot of times it's not even a person looking at it. If you apply online, it's going to be electronic, and what they're looking for are keywords. If in the job announcement, if it says they're looking for someone with administrative skills for 10 years or however amount of time, when they scan your resume and it goes in, it's looking for administrative assistant, it's looking for your um, 
your work history, how long you've been there. So if you're not doing the key things, then you may or may not even get the um, application to get a chance to interview for this particular position. So you definitely want to look over the job announcement and make sure you cover every single thing that's in the job announcement. And that way when you see those keywords, when, when the um, computer sees those keywords, they're like, yes, this is person right here. This person met everything. So we're going to send this for this person's name and resume to the hiring manager. That's if it's electronically. If somebody's looking at it, they may not be that detailed. They may just be scanning through to see what's going on and say, no, not interested. Why? Because those keywords weren't there when we say we're looking for. Okay, like I just say, you know, uh, if it's a person they're receiving hundreds of emails about a job, and most important, like I just said, use electronic applications. So it, it, it's all about um, reading that job announcement and making sure that you have what's in the job announcement, what, what they're looking for, so you can get your foot in the door to have that interview. Okay, so what are some of the characteristics of a well-written resume? You want it to be accurate, right? You don't want any kind of false information on there because what's going to happen, if it's not true and you get into the interview, a good hiring manager or a good interviewer will be able to see through your holes by the questions that they're going to ask. So you definitely want to be accurate and know what you're talking about. You can even bring a copy of your resume with you. Okay, you want to emphasize on accomplishments and your education. And the reason I say emphasize on your accomplishments, let them know that you've been a project manager. And because of your leadership in that project management role, you were able to do whatever, win a multi-million dollar contract or whatever. You want it to be well organized. If you're talking about your administrative assistant, you want to talk about that and all of the duties and responsibilities. You don't want to hop around going from administrative assistant to when you were a bookkeeper to when you were whatever other position you had. Just allow it to be well organized. <coughs> and you want to be concise. You definitely want to put out numbers. If you were doing budget, if you had a million dollar budget, put in there that you were responsible for a million dollar budget. Because once you see numbers, that makes a difference. You want stats on what you've been doing. If you were a supervisor, you want to say you supervise 20 people. Okay? And you want to be truthful about it. You don't want to lie because what's going to happen if you are awarded an interview, they come in, you have all this stuff on your resume, and all of a sudden they get to call in your references. And you told them that you were the project manager for whatever, whatever. They call to confirm. They're asking questions, and you get caught in a lie. You don't want to do that because there's your integrity, and I can almost guarantee you they're going to be like, well, if they lied about something small like this, then we don't want a person that doesn't have integrity being a part of our organization, okay? And you want it to be job appropriate, meaning like we just discussed, you're not applying for jobs that you're not qualified for. And a lot of people would just say, oh, just put it out there. See what happens. And then a lot of times what happens is you have people that know people and they're able to slide into a position because, let's just be honest, they were friends with so-and-so, so that's how they got in, even though they weren't qualified. But you want to just make sure when you're applying for your jobs, make sure it's an appropriate job. If your major, let's say my major, I had an MBA. So if I'm going to apply for something, I'm not going to apply for a job as a journalist. That's I don't have the skills. I don't even have the knowledge to do that. <laughs> okay, you want your resume to be attractive. If it is indeed a paper copy that you're mailing in, you want it to be nice, free from stains, free from, you know, anything. You want a nice quality paper. And you can purchase this paper at Walmart has it, Home Depot, excuse me, not Home Depot, Office Depot, or whoever. It's going to cost a little bit more than that little bonded paper that you normally buy. But again, you want it to be attractive, you want it to be well organized, and you want to make a difference. Because a lot of people will just print it off from, with the paper that they have from home and turn it in. You don't want that. You want to set yourself apart. Okay, so the types of resumes we have. We have a functional resume. Your functional resume focuses on your skills and accomplishments. This is a good format for job seekers with lots of experience. So if you have a lot of experience, you want to go with the functional one. 
if you had a lot of jobs, you may want to go with functional to show that you're, you know, um, diverse. You have a diverse work history. This type of resume provides specific skills and capabilities that are emphasized to highlight your competency for a particular position. And this, um, the functional resume is the one that's most commonly used. So I'm sure all of you probably have a functional resume. Or, oh, let me go to the disadvantages. Okay, so the disadvantages of a functional resume, it can be unclear to the employer because you have a lack of dates and positions and your titles on it, then they're gonna be like, well, what's going on? They may or may not understand. So you wanna make your resume as easily <coughs> to read as possible. So they can get in there and get out. They know exactly who you are, what you're doing, what your skills are. You don't wanna leave questions. And it tends to um, play down on your direct work experience. It's not gonna really show what your work experience is, it's gonna show your skills that you use for that particular job. All right, chronological. It lists the jobs and experience with the most recent mentioned first. This is a good format for job hoopers, excuse me, seekers who have practical work experience with no long-term employment. So you may want to go functional if you don't have a long work history. This one is preferred by employers because it's easy to see what jobs you've held and how long. So if you want them to, if you understand that they're going to be looking at it for 30 seconds or less, you may want to go with this, so they can just look at it, see what's going on, see what your skills are. The disadvantage is it makes it nearly impossible to hide your age. And although we do have an age discrimination law out there, some people, they, organizations don't want older people. Or sometimes they don't want younger people, they want a more seasoned person. So this would be a disadvantage. Okay, it makes gaps in your employment history stand out. So let's say, for females, a lot of times we leave the workplace, to go and have children. So when they see a gap, or, or you know, unfortunately some people may have been incarcerated. There's a gap, so now you have to tell them why, you know, the reason you didn't work for two years or for three years. And sometimes it may be uncomfortable. You may have an employer that says, oh, I don't like um, parents, moms, because the kids are always sick, they always have to leave, they always have to do that. Which that, is it right? No, it's not right, but we're all human, and people have their opinions. And then also, if you're incarcerated, now they may want to say, oh, well, this person doesn't have any type of integrity. Well, why was he or she incarcerated? What did she do? Oh, petty theft or, or whatever. Then they could be judgmental. All right, and the last disadvantage is easy to see that you've been switching jobs frequently. You know, a lot of times, you know, we get into jobs, we're there two or three months, we really don't like it, and we really don't want the job anyway. You know, you still have money saved or, you know, you're looking for that better job, so you just switch around. And that's really not good to do a whole lot of that either. But sometimes, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you may have to. Okay, so what should be included on your resume? Not all resumes are the same, but there are some common elements that they all should include. You have a heading, you have an objective, you have your education, you have your experience, and then you have your activities. Oh, sorry. Okay, your heading. Your heading is essential your essential personal information. So what you're gonna find on your heading is your name. Generally, you want your name a little bit bolder. And make, I'm not saying bright colors or anything, I'm just saying bold, make it pop. So they'll see your name, they'll remember your name. You also want to um, have your address, and you want this to be a permanent address. If you know you're moving in a couple of months or you know you're just you know, here in school, you may wanna use your permanent address on this. So if you don't get an interview for this one, you know, they can call you back for something else. But if you're constantly moving or some, you know, something like that, they may not be able to catch up with you, so you've lost out. And you want to include an email address. Okay, now this is very crucial. In your email addresses, please, whatever you do, try to be as professional as you can. You know, if you want to use your first name and your last name, your initials or whatever, that's fine. That's fine. But be professional. All right, so here are some examples. I use myself. So in the top left-hand corner would be an acceptable, acceptable address or header for mine. And also this, this middle one is also acceptable. And the bottom one, but when you look to the right in these columns right here, do you see my email address? 
do you think they want to hire on um, baby doll or somebody that's going by baby doll or baby sexy shelly that's not cute that's not appropriate and it's really not professional yes sir having a number in your email address would that be no i don't think it's acceptable it is because sometimes you know especially if you have a common name you know maybe you can put junior or the third or you know the year you graduated or something like that that's fine a number is fine okay and then here we go me for life um these are not acceptable. And, and also, let me find your, your addresses. If you're using it, if it's a common um, um, abbreviation, like E for East or whatever, then that's fine. But like I abbreviated, and one of them I abbreviated Port Arthur, or so I thought I did. But um, the top one, did I? Okay, yeah, so, yeah, everybody's not going to know that. So try to spell everything out. If you live on MLK, that's fine. Pretty much everybody in America would know it's MLK, but you may want to um, spell it out, okay? All right, let's see if I get this right this time. No, I didn't. I think I would know by now. Okay, so your objective. Employers often say that this is the most important part of a resume. So your objective is telling them what you want and pretty much why you want it. It's pretty much your, your goal for you to um, get a job. It's generally one sentence. Usually for me, my Objectives are usually about two or three sentences. Your objectives should be fairly specific. Excuse me, specific. If you're applying for different types of job, change your objective. If you're applying for a journalist job, that's what you should talk about: being a journalist and how you love and what you can bring to the table as a journalist. If you're trying to apply for um, a budget analyst position, let them know this is what you want. You love numbers. You're doing this. You're doing that. Okay? The more specific you are on your resume, the better chance you have of getting an interview. Right. Okay, so here's some examples of an objective. I'm seeking a full-time position, excuse me, position with your firm as an investigator. As this resume shows, my experience building a team of experienced investigators and reducing case backlog will provide your office immediate value. I am confident that I can help your firm achieve its goal. So you see how he put the, the stats in there saying that he can help build a team. Not only is he going to build a team, but he's going to also reduce case backlog. They're going to like something like that. They're like, man, we're always working on time. Our backlog is very high. This person says he's going to be able to reduce, reduce the backlog. Let me get this person in and see how. Explain to me how. Now, if you're going to say you're going to reduce the backlog before you even go to the interview or get an interview, you're going to need to know how can you reduce backlog. So I don't know if you're going to have to Google it or do whatever you need to do to go in there, if you get an interview or a phone call, to be able to tell this person on the other end how you're going to reduce this backlog. And it has to be something that's going to be um, accurate and precise. You just can't go in there half step and not know, know what you're talking about. Okay, the next one is, I'm looking for a position where I can utilize my skills, management, and staff recruitment and provide ample opportunity to apply my organizational experience that I've gained over time to grow and contribute to the most effective manner by being a key and effective player with the unlimited loyalty and commitment. And I think those are some buzzwords there. Loyal. You're letting them know I'm loyal and I'm committed to whoever I'm with. Not only that is I'm going to help with the, um, you're, you're going to be effect, excuse me, effective team player. That's a big thing too. When you're in these organizations, you, you want to be a team player. You want to be able to work with everybody no matter what. It's okay if you just like a person. We all don't get along. And that's fine, but you need to be professional enough to be able to get in, do the job that you're paid to do, and get out of it without any kind of friction or any kind of egos coming on, on board. Okay, next, education. As college students, you should specify the dates of your attendance or your expected graduation date. So if you know you're going to graduate in the fall or the spring or something, whenever you're going to graduate, put that on there. But I would definitely put anticipated behind it. So they'll know. And you may also um, use what they call relevant um, courses. So if you're applying for a job as a budget analyst, then you definitely want to um, put in those courses that you've taken for budget, anything that you're doing with the budget analyst, OK? And here are some examples of how that should look. So you see you have your degree, I mean, yeah, which the phone you have. Then your major, and then it's from the form, and you have the year right there. 
<clears throat> but also if you have a minor, you may want to throw that in there too. Because that's also, you know, that's a part of your education. All right, any questions on how to list your um, education? No? Okay. And there's your relevant courses. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. How far do you go back for education? All the way? I mean, I'm sorry, like if you, uh, well, you know, you're older like me, you mm -hmm. have 20 years to go back, you know? Well, if it's relevant. Okay. If you're if you're applying for a job like for me for uh, human resource management, it's my undergrad. Okay. If I'm applying for a job for in HR, I'm gonna put that on there. Okay. I don't care if I got it in the eighties. Oh, but you know I've been formally trained in this. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So to me, it still applies. Somebody else may say different, but as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> I would put it on there. Okay. Because so it shows that okay. that you have been educated in that particular area. So if you have like a degree and certification, maybe a two-year, you may not put all of it, you just, but you put, kind of pick and choose what directly. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I kind of, I'm totally between, like, I finished all the courses, but I didn't get to be because of the submitting the thesis. How can I write that to me? I would just put the relevant courses. The courses that you have had and then if you get the interview then just explain to them that you completed the courses but some things had taken place and you weren't able to to graduate but you still list your courses just let them know that hey i did and if they're really recent then i would put the dates on there because especially when it comes to technology you know um if you were a computer person back in the 70s those classes aren't necessarily the same classes that you take now you know what i mean so you can show them that you've had classes within the last couple of years or whatever you can kind of put the dates on, on the side of it. Any other questions? No? Okay. Okay, here we go. Now we're talking about the experience. To include previous employers, their location, your dates of employment, and your title. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because sometimes different companies or different organizations use different titles. So let's say, for example, you're applying for a job, and uh, AT&T, the title of the position was one thing, but at T-Mobile, it's something else, right? But you're still doing the same job. What I would do is I would put down my position, because when they call to verify, they're going to see that this is the position I did, but in parentheses, I would put the name of that other position. If you know that their organization goes by another name, put that other name in parentheses so they'll know. And then when you get the interview, well, they'll know when they see it. If, if that's in parentheses, it's like, oh, this must be the same job. I can look and I see that they have the same duties and responsibilities. Okay? All right, so here's an example of how you should list your things. And please, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I'm just showing you guys a couple of different examples of, of how it could be done. So you see the home improvement stores, it's located in Chicago. This person was the vice president, that's the date to the present time. Now when you're talking in terms of your duties, your roles and responsibilities, you want to be very detailed. You want to be detailed and, and you actually want to put the stats in there too. So if you were over a department and you, let's say you guys made I don't know, you made pencils. So, if I would put in there that I was over the company and I worked in the pencil department, I would say that we pushed out 100,000 pencils a week. You want to give stats so they know, oh, she's used to a, a tempo, an upbeat. You know, now if you're only pushing out 100 pencils a month, then I, I wouldn't put that number on there. I would let them know that I did it, but you want the mass quantities. You want to show that you can work at a fast pace. All right? <clears throat> so see this? Next instructor says he organized the company's first real estate development department. Okay, that's something big. He took it upon himself and made a new department. So if you're doing some um, groundbreaking things, you definitely want to show that because that's going to show your leadership. That's going to show that you've used a little initiative to do something in your area. Okay? And this is another, you know, he administered a capital budget of 15 to 20 million dollars. You definitely want to do it. When you're dealing with numbers, you definitely want to put that in. That you're working with millions of dollars. 
So if you're trying to uh, be a store manager, and you came from, let's say, J.C. Penney's, they're pushing through a lot of money in, in, in the juniors department at J.C. Penney's. So you want to put, you know, put that in there. Now, if you're just working at a little mom and pop store, and their their um, income for the whole year is twenty, thirty thousand dollars, then you may not want to put that on there. But you definitely want to put on there that you have the experience of doing the budget. Okay. Okay, activities. All right, employers like to see people who have been involved in schools or activities. Now, in this section, <clears throat> it all depends on what you, what job you're applying for. So let's say you have a position as a project manager. Okay, you've never officially worked or been paid as a project manager. However, you have been on the PTA and you've done um, a book fair every year for the PTA for the last two or three years. I would put my PTA in whatever role you were for PTA in there. And then I would also put <clears throat> a little brief description of what your duties and responsibilities were and what the outcome was if it was successful. Now if you redline the um, PTA budget, I'm not going to put that in there. But I would definitely put in there how we did fundraisers, we raised $30,000 to build a new school playground. This is the kind of stuff you want to do. And you want whatever is relevant to the position that you're applying for. Okay, so <clears throat> here are some of my uh, professional and civic organizations that I work for. So, let's say with Pro Out the Beautification Commission, which is the third one. So on Pro Out the Beautification Commission, um, over there, we do a lot of negotiating. We're calling vendors, trying to say, hey, we need some plants out here. Can you send us some, you know, we're trying to get a good price on these plants. So I'm going to make sure I show throughout the beautification on there for me knowing how to negotiate, because I've been on this uh, committee for three years now. The Pleasure Island Commission, also another place. This is where we're negotiating. You know, we're trying to build a new um, golf course over there. So we're talking to the vendors. We're trying to get people out there to cut the grass, keep the grass green. We're trying to find somebody to come in and manage the golf course. So I would definitely put all of those on there and then list it. It's not a paid position for me, but I'm working. I'm negotiating. I'm doing a budget. I'm trying to um, plan for these events that, that's being held out there at Pleasure Island. This is all work experience. So. Just because it's a volunteer or you just do it because you like it, that's experience for you. And a lot of times, I'll be perfectly honest with you, experience sometimes is better than education. Because they're saying, oh, you know what you're supposed to do, but can you apply it? So they don't really know if you can apply it or not until you say, sure I can. I was on the PTA, I was on this board, I was a Girl Scout, I was a den mother. You have all of these things to show your leadership and your skills. So and another thing I do, I don't list all of these organizations on one resume. I pick and choose whatever job I'm applying for. Those are the ones that I list that has, you know, that, that's relevant to what I'm doing. Okay? Like, let's say if I was in, um, if I wanted to be a paralegal and I'm applying for it as, as a paralegal job, I would use my CASA. Because in CASA, we're writing court reports. If you want to be a social worker, CASA would be a very good organization for you to get some experience in. You're going to court, you're speaking for the kids, you're writing court reports, you're interviewing the parents, <clears throat> excuse me, you're interviewing the, the foster care parents. This is all something that will be able to help you as a social worker. So when you go to apply for the job, they say, oh, do you have any experience? Well, of course I do. It wasn't paid, but here we are with CASA, and I just messed up, I'm sorry. Here we are with CASA, and so instead of going in at that bottom, and making the, um, the entry level, just maybe you can move up to the next step and make, you know, a dollar extra or two dollars extra because you've already worked with CASA for a year or two, getting this experience. <clears throat> if they want to, they can go check the court records and see, see your name on file as providing, you know, as creating those court documents. Okay? Any questions about your professional or civic organizations? And another thing, you might want to be careful about that too because let's say you are, um, you're a member of PETA, so you're applying for a job at a, for a coke factory. You think they 
They don't want you there. Don't put that one on there. They don't even have to know you're a member there. You know what I'm saying? Or you ever had any affiliation with them. Unless they come out of the accident, of course, you got to be truthful. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay. <clears throat> References. Okay. There's nothing wrong with attaching a reference to your resume. Because a lot of times when you're doing it electronically, they'll ask you if you want to upload any documents. And another thing is, <clears throat> when you're doing your resume, you want to make sure that these people are going to give you, they're going to say how you're awesome, you're walking on water, you're doing this, you're doing that. You don't want to be like kind of iffy. Say, well, you know, she has her good days and she has her bad days. No, you don't want those kind of things. And then you also want people that are recognized in their field. So if you're applying for a job at the uh, Beaumont Independent School District, you may want to use a teacher. I would go for the teacher of the year <laughs> and make sure she's got, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to get the worst teacher. They're like, we think about firing her anyway. Birds of a feather flock together. You want to make sure that these are upstanding citizens or, you know, at the top of their field. or These, are gonna, these names are going to be recognized. And then sometimes you can't because you guys, you may be from other towns or other, other cities or whatever. But that's why it's important for you to do community service and meet these people. Get in on with these local organizations so you can meet people. And, and when you're part of a local organization volunteering for these people, they're able to vouch for you for your work ethics. So if you want to go serve at the um, soup kitchen or what is it, Southeast Texas Food Bank, you go over there, there are a lot of people from the industry that go and volunteer in these, these places. So they'll get a chance to see your work ethics. You're in there, you're working hard, you're sweating, you're always the first one to say, I'll do it. They're going to remember that, especially when, when you say, oh, I'm looking for a job, or I'm graduating. And they're like, really? Man, check me out. You know, you want to have favor, and you want to be, you know, you just want to have a good, um, when people think of you or think of your name, you want them to have a smile and have something good to say. Not well, I don't really know. Okay? All right. So. When you, when you are going to attach your reference, and again, use the resume type paper and do this and add this to it. You're going to put their name, you're going to put their, their position, and you're also going to say if they're a professional or a personal reference. And generally, you know, you try to use two to four references. And then that way you can at least have two personal and two professional. And like I said, you know, you want it to be people that can talk about your character and how you're honest. Because I think honesty and having integrity and knowing as a, a hard worker will go so much farther than just, oh, he's really smart. Or y'all think he can do the job. They don't want somebody that can do the job. You know, it's a billion people out there that can do the job. They want someone there that's going to work hard for them, somebody that's going to, you know, show initiative. Try something new. Somebody's going to be loyal and committed to the organization. All right? Okay. So what do employer, employers want? They want people with good commu communication skills. You want to be oral as well as written. So if you meet somebody in an elevator or meet somebody somewhere, you want to say, hello, my name is such and such a person. When you're out doing all your volunteer work and talking to the, the head of these companies, you're going to have to be able to speak to them. And when you walk into a room, there's nothing wrong with saying good morning, good evening. Just greet them, whether you know them or not, because you really don't know who that person is. Because you can walk by somebody 10 times a day and not realize, oh, that was Senator so-and-so. Or, you know, these aren't people that you come across every day. Or you don't know that they're the head of mobile or, or total. <clears throat> but if you come in, you smile, you greet them, they're going to remember that. Oh, that was a good kid. But she was pretty nice. You know, that goes a long way. Okay, so they're also looking for people with leadership skills. If you're willing to stand out, just because everybody else is doing something, you don't do it. You know, they're looking for those leaders. They're looking for, hey, something's wrong right here. Oh, a piece of paper right here. Let me get this piece of paper. Let me throw it away. Something that's small, that shows leadership skills because 20 people walk by that one piece of paper and didn't pick it up. But <clears throat> I guarantee you somebody will notice when you stop to pick that paper up. And that shows that you care about yourself, you care about your environment. Okay, you want a person with problem solving skills. So if you see that there's a problem somewhere, are you going to try to figure it out? Are you going to try to help out? Say, hey, I know this is, you know, going on around here, but what do you think about this? Don't just point out the problem. Try to have a solution. 
I'll work with somebody. If you're not sure about what the solution is, just say, hey, I'm not sure what, what needs to be done, but something needs to be done. If you can hook me up with somebody, I'd love to work with them on, on, on this problem. Your interpersonal skills, that goes back to greeting people, your soft skills, how you handle something. If somebody's ugly to you, does not mean you need to be ugly to them. When you go to Walmart, sometimes they scan your stuff and they throw it all over everywhere, and you're upset, and they're upset, but you don't know who's standing behind you. So I'm not saying let people you know, run over you or, or disrespect you or anything. I'm just saying be a little, use your soft skills. Really. I'm like, oh, you're having a bad day. Okay. I'll bag myself. Don't worry about it. Let me get it. I don't want my eggs broken when I get home. Okay, teamwork. This is a big thing. So no matter where you go, even if you're working by yourself, you're going to still be on the team. Because if you're a part of an organization, you're a part of a team. So does that mean if you're writing grants or you're doing this or you're doing that, you may be the only person in your office or your department, but you're going to have to pass it on to somebody else. So this means you're going to have to do your work on time. It's going to have to be accurate. It's going to have, you know, you're going to have to put your all into it and move it forward. Don't make other people miss your deadline because their deadline because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Decision making ability. Okay, sometimes this can be hard because you don't want to be the bad person all the time, but when something is wrong, then you need to be able to address it and say, hey, you know what, that's not right. If you're the supervisor and your friend is constantly coming in late, a decision has to be made. You're gonna have to tell them, hey, you're late, don't have none of that happen again, I'm gonna have to, you know, Put you on the pad or whatever you guys do. You do that, and you know you're going to make a difference. So this is what employees are looking for. Things employees are looking for flexibility. I don't think I can tell anybody about flexibility. We all know that you must be flexible. Just because you you, you work from 7:30 to 3:30, nine months in a row, and they ask you to work from eight to four now, don't get upset. You know, even if you have something planned, just see if you can work around it. Be, be flexible with whatever they need. And that's including interviews, too. So, I mean, please be flexible with them. If they give you a time and say, hey, can you come in, dot, 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 please don't tell people that's not going to work. Just make it work. Make it work some kind of way. Just make it work. Because I'm telling you, I don't know how many chances you're going to get. All right? And then who knows? They may just be saying it just to... Um, just to see how you're going to react or respond, you know? Analytical skills. What do you guys want to do about that? How do you think? What is your, what's your, your, your thought process? How do you look at things? How are you going to, do you see a problem and just leave it there? Are you going to think about it? Is it going to take you a long time to think about it? Or can you come up with it? Are you pretty fast with it? They want to know how your little um, noggin, how fast, how fast is the, Mouse running on the little treadmill. That's what they want to know. Okay, are you competent in what you do? Being competent and having the initiative to do something, that's like totally different. You know, you may be competent to do it, but you also may be lazy. So they want somebody that's going to do their job and do it right. Do it to the best of their abilities. When things go wrong, you're going to still try to make it right. You know, and I'm not saying do this all the time, but I'm just saying, if you ran out of um, a pack, you were using yellow paper, and you ran out of yellow paper for your job, and you have a presentation that's due, you had to make 25 copies, you only have 10 copies, if you have the money to do it, then go ahead and buy a pack of that paper. That's if you have the money to do it. You know, if you don't, that's a different story. Then go try to find some green paper, but just make sure everything's together. You know, just don't have stuff, and just don't turn in anything looking any kind of way. Okay, your energy, your drive, and your enthusiasm. Okay, when you walk in the office in the morning, or when you walk in on your interview, are you like, hey, how you doing? Or are you like excited to be there? Are you happy? They want you to have energy. If you gotta drink a Red Bull in the morning, drink a Red Bull before you go and be wired when you get there. So they're like, man, she got a lot of energy. This is the type of person we need. We need somebody that's going to be able to talk. We need somebody that's going to be able to move around, move these boxes, and do this and do that. Okay? Okay, so here we go. This is a must for your resume. I think we've been over this. You have to proofread it. If you've got a position or you, anything is spelled wrong on your own thing, they're going to be like, what? This is an idiot. He can't get this right. He wants a job.
dog here, and he can't even, you know, spell certain things right. You know, it's supposed to be here. You have her. It's, you know, it's there, T-H-E-R-E, but you have T-H-E-I-R. They're going to look at stuff like that. Please proofread what you have. Time is everything. <clears throat> 30 seconds, right? You guys have any questions about this? And another thing, let me say this much too. When we talk about <clears throat> going out, you want to be presentable at all times. I'm not saying you need to be, you know, I don't know, GQ. Y'all still GQ magazine? Y'all might not know what GQ magazine is, but I don't know, the L magazine or whoever it is now. I don't know. You don't have to be that dressed up, but when you go out and when you're volunteering and doing things, always have your best friend. Don't wear your little booty shorts to your, um, these volunteer things. You know what I'm saying? If you guys don't have your pants sagging, showing your, your briefs. That's not professional. Nobody wants anyone like that. Nobody wants to see anybody in Walmart in their flannel pajamas and their t-shirts. That's not professional. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's you, but we're just trying to help you guys land a job, get a job. So you're going to have to present yourselves at all times. It's really before this little resume comes into play. You always want your best foot forward. You always want to look your best. You always want to be nice and clean, groomed well, excuse me, well groomed. And um, you guys have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sorry. Is there a you're absolutely right. It should be one or two pages. However, when you have well-seasoned people, and I'm going to say somebody like um, um, Johnny Cochran, rest in peace. Do you think Johnny Cochran has a two-page resume? No, he's going to have a pilot resume about this thing. So, when it if it applies to what you want to do, and it's relevant to the job, I wouldn't go past two pages. But if you're going to go to that second page, I would make sure it's at least a half a page or more. Okay? And then generally, margins are, you know, you use your block margins, one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom, one inch on each side. And you usually use 12 font, usually. But, if you have a little more, if you want to go to that 10 font, that 10 pitch, I'm sorry, just to make everything fit, then that's fine too. Do you have a question, sir? Um, what is the purpose of the cover letter? I've been noticing when I try to upload my resume and ask for a cover letter, um, what's the purpose of that? Okay, your cover letter is just like your objective. You're just telling right. them what you want and why you want it, and here are my skills. That's basically it. If I, if I were to do a cover letter, I would say, Hello, my name is such and such. I'm, um, you know, writing in entries of the position you posted. I would say where they posted it. Uh, I would give the job announcement number that they used, if it was online or whatever. And then I would say I feel that I'm qualified for this job because I too love whatever they're talking about. I'm able to whatever they talk about. I have analytical skills. I do whatever. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Show something with a success rate that's measurable and then close it out. I would love to have an interview and discuss this with you. Yes, sir? Could you go back to a couple of that? Back, uh, like employer. Yeah. Right here? So those like uh, items, do you think we have to put in a resume or do we put them in a comment? You can put that in your objective. Like if you have uh, communication skills, mm -hmm. you can put it in your objective. Mm -hmm. And you can also put it in your cover letter to show that you have teamwork skills because you're on such and such a thing. Yeah, uh, I do not need to put it in the red. Sir? I do not need to put those items in the red. Not necessarily, but sometimes you will when you're discussing your roles. Mm -hmm. Your roles will show that you were a team player because you were on such and such a team. And your team had a success rate of whatever it is. Okay? Any other questions? You guys are kind of quiet. It's raining now, so I know y'all don't want to leave. You guys ready to go? This is raining. Hold on, I don't, I don't think I have another slide. Okay, so this is where I got my um, most of my information from. Some of that stuff I just kind of like threw in because I felt like it was like a kind of little need to know. 
But also, if you um, if you have a business card, well, you can use the business style cards and just put your name on it with your address and some of your um, skills, your skill scale. Like if you're an expert in um, decision making, your I don't know anything that you do or you're interested in, you can make that card. And then when you see potential um, employers, you can give it to them. You know, if you guys are just talking about some things and they say they're looking for somebody, it's like, oh, well, if you're ever looking for somebody else, here's a card. Give me a call. And it's perfectly okay to do all of that. You guys, all right. I know you're supposed to be here um, in hours, but let me see where Ms. Andy is. I don't want to let y'all know. Can I ask one more question? Yes, no, please do. All of that, all that additional experience you had, um, If you assisted with the Cowboy case, correct. I wouldn't just say Cowboy case. I would say what year. Oh, okay. Because now if they go and talk to somebody, right. like so-and-so said she was on the planning committee for the Cowboy case. I never heard of her. Yeah. No, so you put the year, and then they said, oh, well, she was here such and such a time. Oh, she may have been. Go talk to Amy or talk to um, Johnny about it. So if it's something that you really want them to know that you did, then I would definitely at least, like, like I just said, put a date on that. So, the campus, I'm sorry, the campus organizations, you know, they have administration, student administration. Would you think, I mean, I've never hired anybody, but do employers, like, look at the fact that you serve, like, you're president, you're treasurer, more than you were just in it? I mean, do you think that's a real, a strong point? It is a real strong point, and you okay. should put it. So, if you're in an organization, we look for it. We AKA, we look for it. We look for it. Yeah, and then that way you would okay. see that you were the secretary, you were the, it's showing right. your leadership skills. And you're also looking for cover letters too, with your resume now. Okay, well, you know what, maybe I, next time I come, <laughs> I'm gonna put the cover letter on there too. Because they are asking for that when you submit your application to get hired. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And oh, one other thing, and I'll get to you in one second. One other thing is when you're, um, you guys definitely want to, when you're applying for a job, you wanna look into the organization. You wanna know something about the organization. So when you're doing your cover letter, you can say, oh, I believe that we should feed the, cho the hungry children in Africa, and da, 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 da. and then you say why, and then you move forward, because they say, oh, did they know about that? And that shows them, oh, you cared enough to even look it up. You're just not looking for a job, you're looking for a career. Because that's what it's all about. They're gonna ask you, what are you looking for? Well, you know, most people say, oh, I need a job. No, I need a career. You want something that, you want these people to know that you're gonna be loyal, you're gonna be committed to them. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, just a suggestion, um, and it, it works, mm -hmm. is um, to send a thank you letter after the interview. Absolutely. Send a thank you letter, and also to um, if, if you don't know if there's if you call if you have your interview and you say hey, we'll let you know in two weeks. If you don't hear from him in two weeks. In a week, call and say hey, this is so and so. I'm just following up. It actually works. Because it does. They'll pull you out and say, oh, yes, we love you. We're still doing this. You still haven't heard from him in a week or two? Call him back. And most interviews, they'll ask you, do you have any questions for them? Please have questions. Because yes, that depends definitely on you have hired. questions. Because they know you're interested then. Yes, and if you do not have a good answer for us, we won't look for somebody who can answer that question. Yeah, absolutely. That's you always want, open you, you want to know about the business. You want to definitely know what their mission is or their um, goals and objectives are. So when you're talking to them, you can throw that and incorporate that into your conversation. Yes, sir. Should we include web links in resume? For example, if I want to show the sample uh, writing, like my thesis or my publication, so is it okay to have a web link under the title? Um, I would say, under your activities, I would say it's okay. If you're going to say that you're a published author, and you want to throw that uh, web link in there? I don't see a problem with it. What, would you guys? I don't know. Some what what organizations organizations too much to on, a, on your resume to be too qualified. You just want to put enough that you need, yeah. not to overdo it. So if it does, if it's asking for you to be a published author or, or whatever, or you know, if you have a blog and you want to throw that in there, then if it's going to help you look or get your foot in the door, it's all about getting your foot in the door. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Where are we going to talk about? You were also going to talk about social media. 
Oh yeah, I'm glad she said okay, just look, quick, social media. I'm gonna I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys are at Lamar. I know everybody loves your school. You love your school, but when you're doing your tweeting and talking about you know, your Facebook, please be positive at all times. You don't want to slam me anybody or anything. Because you know, if you're slamming Lamar and you're in Lamar, then your employer is going to think that oh, they might slam us if we're doing something that they don't like. And a lot of, well, you guys, like for my um, high school kids, I always tell them when you're tweeting or on your Facebook or Instagram, say good things about your school because that's publicity for them and they love positive publicity. But if you're on there uh, <laughs> holding up your uh, martini glass, having a good time, and looking like you, Nobody wants that. Everybody wants, you know, their employers, employees, to be positive role models. Because I know you guys see what's going on in the NFL. Does that have anything to do with the NFL? No. But it shines a light on them. Now they've lost a whole bunch of endorsements because somebody did something that they thought was right or they thought it was okay, and now they're being judged for it. Is it right or wrong? I'm not. I'm not the one to say. But what I will say is try to be, remain positive at all times. Don't have pictures of you at your frat or sorority party with your dress flipped upside your, on, on top of your head. That's not cute. And um, if an employer sees that, they're like, oh no, she's too busy um, partying. She's not going to um, be able to be to work at 7 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning. And then it, it, it brings a negative reflection on their company or their organization. And we're all about Presentation is at everything. You know? Okay. Any more? Oh, two um, more questions. Yes. That's okay. And, and it's not really a question, but you know, they do. Maybe you're not supposed to look at somebody's pictures, but employers do. Even for little minimum wage jobs, they look. They do. And now they have that LinkedIn. I suggest you go to LinkedIn, but please use a good picture because some employers even talk about the pictures that, you know, people are using on their LinkedIn accounts. So you want to be professional when you're on there. I don't, I wouldn't be in there with my two-piece on or just my little halter top on, you know, trying to um, act like I'm all professional when no, it's not, it's very inappropriate. So yes, sir. A question about LinkedIn. Um, you said you have to be specific by keyboard and the job that we are applying to. How to be specific and also general in LinkedIn. I mean, how to have a general profile and specific profile because recruiters are watching the LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. but you're aiming to get a specific position. Mm -hmm. But also, you have you want to have a general profile which recruiters can watch and you know, attract them. Well, I think the general profile should be on LinkedIn if you're going to cover everything that you've ever done than LinkedIn. But when you're applying for your job, like right now, I have four different resumes. If I'm applying for something in the business area, I have my business resume. I have a budget analyst resume, and I have an HR resume, and I have an executive assistant resume. So depending on what I'm doing or what job I'm applying for, I'm going to pull out one of those. And then if I have to, you know, edit it or critique it a little bit, I'm going to do it. But I'm going to be truthful about it. You don't want to lie, but you want to look at it and say, oh, I need payroll. Okay, so let me go back and put my payroll experience in there. Last time I really didn't need payroll. So I left payroll out because I wanted to, you know, concentrate more on my budget analyst information. So you're going to really, truly have to have more than one resume. So you list all of those four resumes content in your LinkedIn as a whole? Yeah, I, I feel like you can put everything in your LinkedIn because everybody's going to be looking at your LinkedIn. You know, your LinkedIn isn't for just a particular job. It's for you to network with people. So when other people are looking at your profile, they're like, oh, he's done this, he's done that, he's done this. And you never know. I mean, it, LinkedIn is global. So I would put everything on my LinkedIn account. But just tell it when I'm doing my, um, for job announcements. All right. Anything else? Yeah. 